The North Shore is based out of Northumberland and is owned by Cedar Cog and is one of several short line operations owned by the same company, with several other operations throughout central Pennsylvania, all of which interchanging and operating via trackage rights over the NS. Northumberland was founded in 1772 and was purchased from the Iroquois Indians in the first treaty of Fort Stanwix in 1768. The village was laid out in 1772 and was evacuated during the big runaway of the American Revolution in 1778. It was finally resettled in 1784. In video T-173, we learned a little bit about the former Delaware Lackawanna and Western Bloomsburg branch, a.k.a. the Bloom. And we also got a quick look at the Front Street Station at Norrie. Front Street Station is a 1910 Pennsylvania Railroad station that's been transformed into an upscale restaurant. So prominent is Front Street to the area that the Central Pennsylvania chapter of the National Railway Historical Society newsletter is named after the station's now permanent Pennsylvania passenger car, the Susquehannock. In 1860, a smaller wooden passenger station was built on the site by the Pennsylvania Railroad but was destroyed by fire after the turn of the century. In 1908, construction began on the building you see here in addition to an expanded classification yard which became the fifth largest railroad yard in the United States. When the building was completed, it opened the way for the Pennsylvania Railroad's flourishing passenger train service that brought 18 trains to town each day. The station closed in 1958 and remained closed until Jay Seidel purchased the building in 1981 and restored it for his restaurant. Front Street Station Restaurant opened for business on August 1st, 1983. Behind the station is CP Nori, which is the gateway to Northumberland Yard and Central Pennsylvania. In years past, Norrie was a busy yard, but like so much infrastructure today on Norfolk Southern, Norrie sees minimal train traffic. The bright spot at Northumberland is the resident short line, the North Shore Railroad, and one of its subsidiaries, the Shimokan Valley Railroad, that are both headquartered in town. Looking to the north, the track on the right is the easternmost of three main line tracks through the yard. And notice that turnout up yonder. That runs behind a business called Fermano's. I don't know this for certain, but I think that they either ship or receive canned goods in those boxcars. Scenes like these are disappearing in railroading as Class 1s are abandoning carload freight in favor of end-to-end -end unit trains. About 60 miles northwest from Nori is the Norfolk Southern Lock Haven Yard in the town of Lock Haven. Convenient. Sarcasm aside, like Nori, Lock Haven is mostly quiet, but also like Northumberland, a North Shore Railroad subsidiary calls Lock Haven its home. This time it's the Nittany and Bald Eagle Railroad. The GP38 number 2004 is a North Shore local painted in an Erie Lackawanna inspired paint scheme. And the Black 3379 is another ex-con that did its time working in local service in our neck of the woods on the Sunbury Lines, Taylor Yard. In video T139, we talked about some of the railroad grants issued by the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation in 2018. In 2019, PennDOT approved 26 additional freight rail improvement projects that it says will improve freight mobility while creating and sustaining more than 390 jobs. During 2019, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation issued $40 million in state grants for various railroad projects. A state-funded project that got my attention is in Northumberland County. The North Shore Railroad received $813,000 to construct a 1,350-foot track and install three turnouts to develop a multi-purpose transload site. The area where the new track and transload will be built is shown here in Danville on the former Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Bloomsburg branch, a.k.a. the Bloom. The Bloom began its existence as the Lackawanna and Bloomsburg Railroad in 1852. Its original charter allowed construction as far as Bloomsburg with a possible extension to Danville, Pennsylvania. A later amendment to the charter permitted construction as far south as Sunbury. When completed, the line connected with the Lackawanna main line just west of Bridge 60 and proceeded in a generally southwest direction through Taylor and Old Forge, eventually reaching the Lehigh Valley's Coxton Yard in Pittston. After crossing the Susquehanna River, it proceeded along the Susquehanna to reach Kingston, Berwick, Bloomsburg, Danville, Rupert, and Northumberland. The line from Taylor to Steamtown is part of our very own Sunbury Line, operated by the NS and the Delaware Lackawanna Short Line. Along the way, the DL&W crossed over the Susquehanna River again to access some properties in Luzerne County and Hanover Township and Nanticoke. These properties are known as Concrete City today and have long since been abandoned. Further west, the line provided interchange with the Reading Railroad in Rupert and Northumberland prior to the advent of Conrail. 
The Conrail merger in 1976 resulted in the closure of the Reading Railroad's Rupert Yard and the abandonment of the Reading Line through Catawissa, Danville, and into Milton at MU Tower. The abandoned Reading Railroad's Bloomsburg Branch Bridge for the line that ran to Benton is still around today, behind us, and the venerable Rupert Cover Bridge, which, as you can see, is still in use today. The Bloom continued to operate after the Erie Lackawanna merger and continued interchanging with the Reading Railroad and the Pennsylvania Railroad slash Penn Central until Conrail in 1976. When Conrail took over most of the Erie Lackawanna in northeastern Pennsylvania, operations on the Bloom changed drastically. Conrail operated the line between Beach Haven and Northumberland and the West End between Kingston and Scranton on the East End. The part between Kingston and Beach Haven was abandoned and ripped out shortly after Conrail began. Today, the North Shore operates the West End and the LNS operates the East End and the Reading and Northern operates the line from Pittston to Taylor as you can see here. As long as we're talking about the DL and W, I thought that fans might be interested to know that while popular competitor chime horns were available, their beloved railroad early on customized most of the E8 fleet with the rare Leslie Typhon model A125-200 3H chime tone air horn. This three chime combination musically sounded a distinctive discord consisting of D sharp, the largest horn, B, and above middle C, an F note. Alas, by the late 1960s, all three H horns were replaced with the then ubiquitous Nathan Air Chime model M3 three chime horn, the standard passenger road locomotive horn of 1960 merger partner, the Erie Railroad. Following the bloom south to its end puts you smack dab at the Northumberland Yard at Front Street. Northumberland was home to perhaps the most unique set of Pensy position light signals in existence. Northumberland is in the middle of hardcore snake eyes or red eye territory. Red eye signals had the red aspect replaced with red lenses and left the center lamp out when displaying stop. One theory was to make the signals more readable through the fog laden valleys along the Susquehanna River. In addition to the signals, Northumberland offers the rail fans several railroad stations, a fair sized yard and the North Shore Railroad as we talked about. In fact, Norrie, as the eastern interlocking is called, is the former Pennsylvania Railroad yard that, in the beginning, was supposed to be the Pennsy's main yard on the Buffalo line, but that honor wound up going to the yard at Enola instead. Across the Susquehanna River, which this northbound train is crossing over, is the town of Sunbury and C.P. Case, which is the switch to the Norfolk Southern River line and Sunbury line to Binghamton, New York, Buffalo, New York, New England, and Canada. The color light signal in the foreground is a sign of the times. PTC took hold between Harrisburg and Lock Haven in 2018 and 2019, spelling doom for the beloved Pennsylvania Railroad era position light signals that stood for more than 50 years. From Lock Haven north to Buffalo, all PRR position lights have gone dark with many being removed. The track to the left of the signal is the Bloom. Just around the bend, about one half mile, is the North Shore headquarters and shops. The North Shore has trackage rights via the Norfolk Southern Line which allows the railroad to connect to the south with the Shimokan Valley Railroad at Sunbury to the north and west with the Union County Industrial Railroad at Milton, the Lycoming Valley Railroad at Muncie and at Linden, and the Nittany and Bald Eagle Railroad at Lock Haven. On the North Shore side of things, the NSHR2 leaves Norrie Yard in Northumberland and works the Shimokan Valley Railroad to Shimokan to work Shimokan Carbons, which is a lot of Shimokan, and occasionally interchanges with the Reading and Northern at Mount Carmel. The NSHR1 works the Union County Industrial Railroad and its customers. The Shimokan branch could also be accessed directly from the south by means of a connection referred to in earlier electronic timetables as the Haas Lead. The old Shimokan branch is now the Shimokan Valley Short Line which operates the line between Sunbury and Mount Carmel. If you're lucky, you might be able to catch the Shimokan Valley leaving Norrie and moving on to the Sea of Cog. We were in the right place at the right time, but the contradicting Sunbury streets proved to be too much of an obstacle to catching up to today's local, so we called off the chase. Judging by its makeup, the train entering the yard is likely the H53 turn to and from Enola. This is the train that cost us the 10A and 11A trains that used to run back and forth between Binghamton and Northumberland. To our interest are the three perfectly matched EMD SD40-2s. The flexi-coil trucks and low-mounted ditch lights are easy identifiers of their big blue heritage. The one that's most important to us for this video is the 3347 which began its life as the Conrail number 6389 that was built in 1977. 
like so many of today's SD40s on the NS, it did its time in our area during the first days of autumn in 2017 where we caught it in the blackness of night while doing some really early morning pre-dawn rail fanning. Across the river from Riverside is the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western Railroad town of Danville. As we learned again in video T173, Danville is one of the many towns and boroughs that the Bloom Line runs through between Norrie and Berwick. We also learned that Danville is home to a future transload site that's currently under construction. One little known fact about Danville is that it's said to have the oldest documented rail trail in the entire United States. This of course is alleged. The J. Manley Robbins Trail which runs through the outskirts of town is the former railroad line for the Montour which was a 10 ton narrow gauge locomotive used for carrying iron ore between deposits and furnaces. The line was converted to a bicycle path in the 1890s. Listen to that again, 1890s, not 1980s. The original one mile rail bed trail section now connects with adjacent additional trails and recreation amenities near the Mahoning Creek. Rail fanning in central Pennsylvania is a scenic undertaking since there are usually no major highways. Chasing trains is a series of ups and downs and twists and turns. Endlessly changing scenery from farms and villages to towns and churches. This is flyover America. Today, we're chasing the daily southbound Binghamton, New York to Enola, Pennsylvania train 11Z. Shown here at a place the railroad calls Banks, if you look ever so closely, you'll notice the siding track in the foreground next to the train. It's a hand-throw siding not used much from what I can tell, and it's known to rail fans as the mud hole. And if you're wondering if you've seen the newly minted NSAC 44 before, you have. It was trailing second on the train 14R that was headed by the Virginian Heritage Unit number 1069 and that was our last railroad catch of 2019 and the decade. The AC44 C6M is the former Dash 944 CW number 9096 and is leading a massive six unit lash up just a few miles from the Buffalo line in Sunbury at the control point called CP Case. The Pennsylvania Railroad began using CTC on the Buffalo Line way, way back in the late 1930s with an installation between Machias, New York and East Aurora, New York. But the second phase between Rockville, Pennsylvania and the west end of the Northumberland Yard was accomplished in the late 1950s. Part of the upgrades included this then new block station at Case which replaced the original tower. The board was a three-sided union switch and signal design common to the time and the rightmost portion was originally intended to serve the Wilkesbury branch but the PRR reportedly balked at the cost and opted to close the tower at Nescopec which controlled a nearly three mile long siding near the geographic center of the 60 mile branch. As originally designed, the mainline portion of the project involved controlled sidings at Ferry which is Clark's Ferry, Miller which is Millersburg and Boyle which is Herndon, Pennsylvania. Double track began at Creek just south of Sunbury and continued to Molly at the west end of the Northumberland Yard. The junction to the Wilkesbury line in both directions was accomplished by means of a unique arrangement whereby freights crossing the bridge from Northumberland crossed the eastbound connection at grade, then looped around the northwest corner of Sunbury. The two lines joined at Banks, another remote controlled interlocking one mile to the north, but in earlier days, double track extended to Raven Tower about five miles to the north. Now is a good time to explain something that I haven't talked about in the past and that's how the 10A and 11A moved in and out of the Northumberland Yard. Looking at a screenshot of the Wikimapia map, you can see where the river line merges into the Buffalo line at CP Case. Once the entire train clears the switch, the whole train must then back up into Northumberland Yard. For the train 11A, the movement was just the opposite. The entire train had to back out of Norrie and then forward onto the river line. As you can imagine, this was a time consuming operation and maybe why it was abolished. Although, if history hadn't changed things, this time consuming operation could have been avoided. Take a look at this aerial screenshot of Bing Maps. The red line is today's river line and buffalo line. But look at that yellow line. That's a now long gone track that existed in the days of the Pensy and the Penn Central. As you may know by now, the river line was once the Pennsylvania Railroad Wilkesbury branch to Buttonwood and in the days of interchange with the DNH, the Pincy would run traffic down to this point and utilize that long gone track into Northumberland Yard. From there the train would go to Lock Haven where it picked up the Bald Eagle branch south to Tyrone, Pennsylvania and its connection with the Middle Division 
to Altoona and beyond. The Bald Eagle Branch is now today's Nittany and Bald Eagle run under the North Shore system. I point this out because this operation lasted into the dark days of Penn Central and both PC and DNH did a brisk business on these lines. This is important because when most people talk about the Penn C, as far as they're concerned, if it didn't happen on its Philly to Chicago route, then it didn't happen. Same thing on Penn Central. With all the ammunition that PC gave critics to focus on, rarely did anyone pay attention to the smaller, lesser known operations like this one. Well, I'm here to start shedding some light on them. 